I'm going to get to Quentin in a second, but you know how they talk to me in my ear sometimes, Art, and tell me what to say? Or they just yell at me? They just got in my ear and said, Art believes the lows are in for the year. True or false? True, true. I, you know, and, and, and obviously we're going to have these uh, market gyrations around data points that disappoint us. What's interesting to me is if you look at the three weeks uh, coming into last week, the three weeks the market sold off, it sold off because the economic data was too good. Remember that feeling that, hey, this you know, good news is bad news? Um, you know, lo and behold, we have a, a positive four-day run, and the CPI comes in modestly hotter than our expectations, right? So what does that really change at the end of the day? Is the Fed going to do anything differently at their meeting next week? Not likely. They're likely going to raise by 75 basis points. And even if they want a full percentage point, does that really matter to us, or what, does it matter where they stop? And where they stop is the question, right? So coming into this week, we thought it was 4%. Maybe that goes as high as four and a quarter. But I think we just have a, a, a tendency to overreact and take markets all the way back to where they were last Wednesday. And, and when we look at markets thus far in the second half, we're certainly better in the, in the second half. We're up on a quarter to date. We're up on a five-day basis. We're up on a one-month basis. So yeah. the sky's not always falling here. And, and, and what, we, you know, what we thought yesterday was that the Fed likely gets a terminal rate of 4%. Maybe it's four and a quarter. I don't think that makes a, a, a huge difference. And I don't think we get back down to the 3,600 level. It, it feels it feels, Quint, like sports, right? Like on Monday morning, we're talking about the Sunday football. The Dallas Cowboys will never win another game, right? And everybody's assuming what's going to happen based on a one-week performance. Today is bad, no doubt. But to Art's point, I mean, we're just back to the levels of a week ago. Yeah, you're right, Brian. I mean, Art brings up some good points. I think the difficulty is, is the volatility is nauseating. I mean, Yes, it's a, it's a game, uh, like, I mean, you're mentioning looking at a football game, but it's a game where, you know, Dallas is projected to win by 42 and they lose by 50. I mean, it's just, it's all over the map, right? So these these data points come in and they're just swinging us wildly and, and it's incredibly nauseous. You know, nauseous. Well, and that's bad. I mean, is that good? It's good for hedge funds probably and trading desk, Quint, but for the average investor, for the CNBC viewer, it is not, it's a nauseating and it's annoying and it may drive people out of the markets. I can't deal with it. Yeah, no question. I mean, we're having conversations with our clients every day, really encouraging them to, you know, make sure they, they take a step back, you know, not to look at and micromanaging their positions. And uh, this is an opportunity, I will say, when, when markets are as inefficient as they are at, at moments now, when they swing as wildly both up and down, where I think you have to, to really know what you own and be able to to you know, venture in during days like today and, and possibly pick up some bargains. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Art, you'd agree with that. If you think the lows are in, so where do we go then? Where are bargains? If I knew where the bargains were, I'd be in that aisle. Right. And, and, you know, the stock market is one of those places the, when things go on sale, people rush out of the store versus buying. And I think that we're currently going to likely be in a 3,900, 4,300 range for the S&P 500 for the next couple of months. Remember, we've got a Fed meeting next week. We also see a PPI before that happens. I think that if you are waiting to get into some of these growth names uh, that are very defensive, like Apple, Microsoft, and and, and uh alphabet, you're seeing some bargain prices here. I think that that's a defensible part of a barbell strategy. On the other side of that, you want to have exposure to energy. I think energy is, is throwing off some great bargains here. So if you've been sharpening your pencil and looking for ideas, I certainly think that's what's yeah. going to help you maintain over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah, everybody seems to love energy, but the stocks haven't done anything for the last three months. They rocketed at the beginning of the year and then just kind of leveled off. Art and Quint, thank you both very much, guys.